Y'all know what time it is. Black Bandana. Two black MMA journalists. Yeah, it's time for Black Market Picks UFC 217 edition. Bisping versus GSP. Great to have you guys here today. All the top plays in under 10 minutes. And I need to be gone in about 10 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and get this timer started immediately. Let's not delay. Um, hope you guys had a great weekend last weekend. If you follow me on Twitter, I had a pretty good weekend for once. But uh, yeah, let me get this started. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's up, guys? Of course, my co-host, Divine Prodigy Heard, but not seen. As usual. What did the price range this week provide? 9.2 to 8.6, 8.5 to 7.9, and then 7.8 down. Okay, so 9 point, what's the top price range? 9.2 to 8.6. Okay, let's start now. In the top price range, my number one overall play at $9,200 is going to be Joanna and Jay Check. I think she's always a, uh, a lock for over 100 points and you just can't you can't count her out man I mean J check is a, it's just a, it's a boss play every single time when has she, when's the last time she scored under 100 points and I and I don't see that happening here my number two overall play at $9,100 is going to be Eon Kutalaba at $9,100 I think he's a awesome play up against his opponent oh oh I can't even pronounce his name. I know he gets hit a lot, and Qtalaba likes to hit people really hard. So I'm going to have a lot of Eon Qtalaba. My number three overall play by a hair is Walt. Big ticket Harris is Mark Guybeer. I was playing on ride him heavy against Guybeer a couple of cards ago. He, he The fight fell out at the last minute. I plan on getting back on that train against again here. Honorable mention to uh, Paulo Borchinha. I think he's a great play. Also, Travis Clark, what does your top tier look like? I have to echo everything that you just said, really. Um, number three is going to be Ayan Kutalaba. I really don't know too much about his opponent, but like, if you told me before we started the show that he's hittable, you don't want to be hittable against the Hulk. Like, that's plain and simple. The Hulk comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. And if you're hittable, you most likely will be getting destroyed. So first round, but even if it's not the first round finish, you know, maybe a couple knockdowns and early second round get him out of there. We'll still still put up enough points. Um, second is uh, Walt Harris. It doesn't change, uh, providing no heavyweight freaking change or whatever. Walt Harris should do what we thought he was going to do the first time. Um, Mark Godbeer is not looking to take him down. He's going to look to strike with him. That's what we want with Walt Harris, the big ticket, knock him out. First round, I'm calling it. And number one, I mean, that was number two. Number one has to be your Anna J check. I love Rose Diamond Yunus, but I don't think she has enough. I don't think she has enough tools in her box to beat Joanna and J check. Joanna's basically a lock, like you said, for 100 plus significant strikes over five rounds. How can you not play Joanna? Okay. Middle price range. What is it? 8,500 to what? 7.9. Uh,. You guys must have forgot this week, but Georgia St. Pierre is back. He's my number one overall play in this price range. This is a uh, say candy matchup for him. He's not facing anybody with a with a serious wrestling background. He's got a piston like jab uh, that's just ferocious. Um, Georgia St. Pierre is a beast that people forgot about. His jab opens up his takedowns. His takedowns open up his strikes. Oh, man, welcome back, Georgia St. Pierre. Have you, have you number seen two, the number two overall? My your turn, oh my sir. It's going to be Cody <laughs> Garbrandt at eighty three hundred dollars. Uh, close between him and Georgia St. Pierre. I don't even think there is a number one, number two, but I think he beats up Billy Shaw all day, just as Dominic Cruz did. I think there's a hierarchy in this division. Garbrandt is is number one. Uh, Cruz is number two. Billy Shaw probably number three, and uh, number one over number three all day. Then my number three play in this division is going to be one Curtis Razor Blades. I think he's got some high upside. It, it could end up being like Omi Alanchuk again, but I don't know if it is. But I, he's 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 the better striker here. Um, he's a great wrestler. He's gonna be he's gonna be tuning his striking into wrestling. I like the upside. I want to say Mickey Gall. It, it's close between him and Mickey Gall though. 
Javaz, what's what's your top three in this price range? Number three, I have Curtis Blades. I don't really like Alexio Linick. I don't think he's pretty good at all. Um, Curtis Blades should get the takedown here, and uh, we we we're always looking off looking out for the submissions that freaking Alexio Linick can pull out. He's pulled out like two or three Ezekiel chokes already. As long as we're worried of those, we should beat him. He has he has gas tank issues as well. I never like people with gas tank issues. Um, number two, I have Cody Garbrandt. He should destroy Dillashaw. This is close, of course, a rivalry, but he should not fight with that with that heated rivalry in mind. Um, basically, we basically say that uh, Dillashaw is like a poor man's uh, Dominic Cruz. So if we just beat Dominic Cruz, what are we gonna do to the poor man's one? Just saying, I think Cody Garbrandt takes this all day. And number one, I have uh, Michael Bisping. Now, of course, you can probably reverse it. You can, of course, you have to hedge this fight. It's a title fight, but I think Bisping, who who's a natural 185, or actually he walks around with more, he has to cut down here. I think Bisping doesn't even have to. I mean, George St. Pierre doesn't even have to cut weight really, but uh, I think Bisping. I like him for the striking advantage. I think he has. Uh, I think his takedown defense is credible. It's very underrated, and I think for somebody to be coming back to action after two years being away. It'll be hard for him training versus in fight, as we just seen Fyodor Machida. Although this is definitely a different type of fight, but I think I like this being to get it done here. I, I, I pretty like it. I like it pretty much. I like it a lot. Okay, what's uh, what's our bottom? And with, what's our bottom tier going to be this weekend? Bottom tier is seven point and below. But before I say that, um, have you seen George St. Pierre's scores? Like, if he was back with the the score we have now, that guy's a monster. My God. Like crazy, but uh, yeah, yeah, he won't win, so it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, whatever. Anyway, in the bottom <laughs> price tier, my num my top plays are going to be in GPPs. I've got number one overall here is going to be Jorge Masvidal, seventy six hundred dollars. I don't know if he does win, but it should be a close fight. I don't think he does, but he's a hell of a fighter, and uh, and I think he's a great play in this price range. Should have the highest ownership. Number two overall for me is going to be Big Rig Johnny Hendricks, $7,300. Either Johnny Hendricks is going to get steamrolled over or else he's going to win with his wrestling. And Borchini shows some shoddy takedown defense against Ben Boche. That's not the thing to have against Johnny Hendricks. Johnny Hendricks is post-Usada. He's kind of washed up. So I love this this play for GPPs. It's, it's a two-way. It either goes one of two ways. Either Johnny Hendricks is beat up or he wins with his wrestling. My number three overall price range, uh, uh, play in this price range, is going to be Corey Overtime Anderson at seventy two hundred dollars. Um, I like a lot of stuff down here. I like Ricardo Ramos. I like Rose Namajunas. But Anderson works hard, and if you don't knock him out, he's hard to beat. Saint Prue gets lazy at sometimes, and so um, since Saint Prue won't have his grappling advantage here, I think that Anderson is a great, awesome play. Uh, who are your top three plays in this price range? I think uh, got a lot of great plays here. I think it does too. Number three, I have Corey Anderson. You, you never can really trust old Vincent Crew. Uh, he's so inconsistent. Corey Anderson at least has a decent amount of hands. I know he works with Frankie Edgar, so that's always coming up. Um, I know his cardio usually checks out every time, but against St. Crew, um, I don't know if you really want to take him down. I mean, I guess that's the route to beating him. I know that's what the route uh, the Glover to Chera took, but um. Um, Corey Anderson has some upside for this price, at least. Only thing we have to worry about is his chin. Now, old Vincent does have some power, and Corey Anderson's chin has always known to have been a bit shaky. But uh, if he can somehow get past that and work his game plan effectively for this price, it should pay off well. Plus, he's, plus he pushes the pace, so it's always good. Um, number two, I'm going to have to say James Vick. Uh, I think this fight might be forgotten, but uh, Vick is a tough customer. Now, uh, I know he has that tall man defense, and he gets hurt a lot, but he always – somehow sticks in there. And uh, him and Joe Duffy would be a pretty good fight, but I think no matter who wins, that fight will be a finish. So I don't I don't see too many people talking about James Vick, Joe Duffy. So that, that fight could be important. It could be key. It could be low owned into, in, for GPPs. I'm just putting that out there. And the number one, I have Jorge Masvidal, my conviction play of the week. I'm not playing any Stephen Thompson. This is a, I think this is a, a matchup made in heaven for Jorge Masvidal. He lives for this. He's been in many a street fights. This is basically just... Uh, 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 this would be fun to him, actually. It's, it, he's not going to have to work by any takedown. It's just straight chess match with striking. And I think I like Jorge Masvidal to tough it out more than Stephen Thompson is willing to, you know, uh, stick up in there. Even though Stephen Thompson does have heart, but I, I like Jorge Masvidal a lot. I think he, I don't think he puts him away. I think it goes to a decision, but I have Jorge Masvidal winning that decision pretty uh, handily.
I, like I don't. Them. I don't. But I still like them as a player. That's it for today. We got a minute left, as usual. All the top plays in under ten minutes. I'm glad you guys tuned in. If you want to tune into the full podcast, go check out the MMA Edge Fancy Podcast on Win today. Uh, but for today, that does it, guys. Thank you guys for tuning. And in. early, and early, and we're early. Yeah, coming through. So, 